Hello, hello, my dear friends. I am Father Matthew Vulcanescu in the Church of uh, St. Edward the Martyr and St. Paraskevi of Liverpool in the Archdiocese of uh, British Isles and Ireland uh, under the um, uh, Antiochian Patriarchate, Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of the British Isles and Ireland. And with me is uh, Brother Michael Goch, Hello, Michael. Good blessing, Father. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, so, um, we are together today uh, for discussing a very important matter for our salvation because, uh, as we know, the baptism is very important. It's the door of entrance in the church. So, uh, because it's the door, uh, it's very important to talk about the baptism. So, um, um, I uh, will start to read, the, we have here the um, canonical resources and policies of, for the reception of the heterodox, um, for the use in the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of the British Isles and Ireland, uh, adopted from the policy document of the Antiochian Orthodox Ar Archdiocese of North America, uh, 9 uh, January uh, 2024. So, um, we have here um, some ideas mm -hmm. yeah, uh, about economia and acrivia, yes. about what means uh, salvation, about the ecclesiology of St. Cyprian, and uh, after that we have some canons. We have uh, the 19th canon of the Council of Ni Ni Nicaea, 7th Council of Constantinople, 95th uh, Council of Trullo, and uh, 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 developments after the era of the first seven ecumenical council, Council of Constantinople, Council of Moldova, uh, and after that, Disserting Voice and Modern Supporters, Council of Moscow, we have different councils, and uh, um, we have the Economia and the Reception of Converts, um, yeah, and we have some uh, quotation from uh, Florovsky, from Andrew Luth. Yeah, so uh, uh, after that we, um, we have um, a question, who decide the manner of reception? And here is wrote that um, all matters of reception of converts to the Orthodox faith are decided by the bishop and not by the priest. And especially not the person entering the church. Occasionally some will approach our clergy and state how they want to be received into the Orthodox Church, by baptism or by chrismation. Clergy are expected to follow these directives given by the Metropolitan of the Archdiocese, as presented in this document. The priest investigates what the person has, uh, has received consulting lists below. Any variance or ambiguity must be referred to the local bishop who retains the authority to direct proper reception into the Orthodox Church. Priests and lay people do not have the authority to deviate from these directives. Yeah, very interesting. Yes. Well, the first time that I hear that the, 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 just the bishop receiving the church. Um, after that, we have corrective baptism, mm -hmm. so-called corrective baptism, and we have here some recently have been endorsing correcting baptism, a baptism after reception in the Orthodox Church by chrismation. This is encouraged in some monasteries, including Mount Athos, and perhaps in some jurisdictions. The practice of corrective baptism is forbidden in the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of the British Isles and Ireland and lay people who receive the corrective baptism will be excommunicated. Yeah. And the clergyman will be deposed. Yeah. This is a serious offense breaking the unity of the church as such is de dealt with in an uncom uncompromising manner. Any person who receives a corrective baptism is not eligible for ordination in the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of the British Isles and Ireland. 
yeah, after that we have ways of receiving converts. Uh, ways of receiving converts. So we have here um, uh, reception of converts into the Orthodox Church, Canon 95 of the Council of Intrulo, which was ratified by the Second Council of Nicaea, the Seventh Ecumenical Council, and is a restatement of ca Canon 7 of the First Council of Constantinople, provides three ways to receive converts into the Orthodox Church. One, through profession of faith. Two, through profession of faith and chrismation. And three, to profession of faith, baptism, and chrismation. In order to understand this and apply these canons in our contemporary setting, it is important to look at each to see the underlying criteria established by the Holy Fathers of these ecumenical councils. Um, and we have uh, here uh, G1. There are a smaller number of circumstances not converted by the canons, not covered by the canons, in which the bishop has both the discretion and the authority to receive a person into the church by a renunciation of heresy and profession of faith alone, assuming that the person concerned was originally baptized in the Orthodox Church. However, in cases of formal apostasy, that it is the renunciation of Christ in adhering to a religion other than Christianity, then the baptized but apostate person is to be received back by a public renunciation of their errors, a public confession of the Orthodox faith and chrismation. Yes, when somebody is baptized in the Orthodox yes. Church, it's normal to be brought again with the uh, confession of faith mm -hmm. and forgiveness and uh, holy chrismation. Yes. This is normal. So, through profession of faith and Miron, Myron, chrismation. Traditionally, Orthodox theology received those converts who have been baptized with water in the name of the Holy Trinity by chrismation. The reception of a convert by chrismation is not the recognition of the validity of non-Orthodox baptism. Instead, it is an act in which chrismation perfects whatever was lacking in their non-Orthodox baptism. Those, these baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, with water by a church that professes a Trinitarian faith, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, are to be received by profession of faith and chrismation. Yeah. So uh, here we have a problem because even the form of the baptism mm -hmm. today at the Protestant and Roman Catholics, there is no submersion, which immersion. Is, which is what baptism means. In yeah, case. baptism means immersion three times in the water. So yes. um, the Roman Catholics, the Protestant um, and other groups, new pro, um, the non-denominational, the non -denominational, yeah, yeah. they uh, don't perform a baptism with free um, immersions. immersions. Yeah. Uh, they are some non-denominational. They make just one immersion. Yes. But they say it in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Others, they uh, m made sprinkling a little on the head. Yes. And others just put pour some water uh, in the face. or yes. uh, mm -hmm. So this is not baptism. No. This is not even the shape, the form of the baptism is not baptism. No. But <clears throat> now we have another problem. Even was a real baptism, like a real form of the baptism, yes. but outside the church, with the free uh, immersions, um, we can't say that magically, mm -hmm. because we say they say a formula, yes. it works by magic, by spelling. You say like a spelling. Yes. Yeah, it's it's impossible. Isn't the question, Father, is which Holy Trinity? We, yes, yes, which Holy Trinity is? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so we have a big problem with that. Mm -hmm. We don't know which. Uh, it's not just the spelling of the words mm -hmm. and uh, doing, uh, imitating yes. the church. That means that uh, 
uh, this is valid or this is holy or yes. this is a remain of the church or yes. mm -hmm. yeah so we have a big problem uh, uh, on this side but even so even saying that uh, they were baptized in the name of the holy trinity but because the form mm -hmm. is not uh, valid yes uh, and is not immersion that means baptism we know that the Mount Athos, yes. they baptize everybody. Yes. And even they baptize those who are baptized in the Orthodox Church just by pouring a little on the head. They do the three immersions in yes. the water mm -hmm. to be sure that the baptism is baptism and not be deprived by the Holy Grace. Yes. So this is not a wrong practice. Let's go uh, further. Nonetheless, pastorally, not dogmatically, when the catechumen has persistent personal and spiritual concerns with their baptism in the former heterodox tradition, the archdiocese does allow them to choose an orthodox baptism instead of chrismation. The priest who baptizes in such circumstances must, however, make it very clear that both options, baptism and chrismation, have e equal standing in the economy of the church and both equally confer membership and grace in the body of Christ. Um, so we, uh, we will see if, if this is true or not. Yeah, we'll see based on the Holy Fathers. So let's go further. Historically, the canons speci specifically directed the followers of these heretical groups to be received by chrismation alone. Arians. They profess that Christ is a cre creature not homoousios with the Father. Arians do not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. Macedonians, semi-Arians, who deny the deity of the Holy Spirit, they were pneumatomachi, combatters against the Holy Spirit, founded by Macedonius, first of Constantinople, considered the substance of the Son to be homoousios, but not homoousios, yes. And Sabbatians, Sabbatius was a, a Novetian presbyter who held the Pascha and Passover should be kept at the same time by Christian and Jews. And Novatians refuse readmission to communion of the lapsed. The followers of Novatian called themselves the Katari or the pure ones. Other than, than refusing the lapsed, uh, yeah. um, back into communion, yeah. Quattro decimans and tetradits. Early Christian heresy, uh, though following, observed Pascha on the Jewish Passover and not necessary on Sunday. Apollinarists claim that Jesus has a normal human body but a divine mind instead of a human soul. Um, so we must say that all these groups of heretics, mm -hmm. they are not exist anymore. Yes. So uh, Arians, Macedonians, Sabbatians, Novatians, uh, Quattro Decimans and Apollinarists, they were these groups, they were received at that time. Yes. But it didn't talk about the Roman Catholics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Um, uh, they said after that, criteria. The criteria for reception by renunciation of heresy followed by chrismation was made for those churches that held a traditional form of baptism in with water and in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. They might have a defective theology but continued with a recogni recognizable form of Christian baptism and Christian belief and practice. In these cases, the church did not baptize, re-baptize those who had already been baptized. To do so was seen to be a sacrilege by the Holy Fathers. No less concern for salvation in such circumstances by the catechumen does justify some uh, le uh, lenacy and therefore the choice of baptism if their concerns cannot be quietened by chrismation alone. Reception, reception by chrismation in the modern era has been interpreted, interpreted to include 
And now it's the horrifying thing. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Roman Catholics, only by chrismation. That is, those belonging to the Roman Catholic Church, including Eastern Catholics, such Maronites and Melkites. Uh, the family of non-Chalcedonian Orthodox churches, including the Assyrian Church of the East, the Syrian Jacobite, the Indian uh, Churches Malankara, the Armenian Apostolic Church, the Coptic Church, the Ethiopian Church, the Eritrean Church. Um, this is in uh, in contrary in in opposition with the 91 statement. Yes, they said that no monophysite must be received. Uh, yes. In they the, remain in their uh, respective uh, churches. Exactly. Yes. Uh, after that, traditionally Trinitarian Protestants. This is this list is being complied from the confessional and liturgical practices for those denomination in the British Isles and Ireland, and will be published in the next edition of this document. For current information, please contact the Metropolitan Archbishop. Independent churches. And uh, here uh, we have independent churches, most question of, so we have here independent non-denominational churches of various backgrounds, smaller denominational groups, more question, questionable groups requiring more attention. Yeah, and uh, after that, uh, progressive Protestants through profession of faith, baptism and chrismation. All other heretical groups, Greeks, pagans, were received by renunciation of heresy, profession of faith, a period of catechumenat, following by baptism and chrismation. This include the following groups. Uh, and here are the groups that were in the, in the council. They are not exist anymore. Yes. Um, they were received by uh, holy baptism. Paulinialist, Eunomianist, Montanist, Sabellianist, Manichaeist, Valentinians, and Marcionites. Um, yeah, and after that, modern application, the non Trinitarians uh, are received by baptism. They say here, the ones or Jesus only Pentecostals, the Pentecostals Assembly of the World, the United Pentecostal Church, the Unitarian Church, and some Congregationists. Churches that have played with the the language of baptism. Churches that do not practice baptism. We have here uh, other groups, non-Christians, verification of baptism after that. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's... Um, Quite a lot here, and that after that we have um, some uh, appendix patristic sources on reception of converts. Stephen, Pope of Rome, is not a saint. Stephen, it's uh, is Stephen uh, Saint Cyprian is saint. Yes. Yeah, Saint Cyprian of Carthage, Saint Basil the Great, Kirill of Jerusalem. Yeah, we have here Leo the Great, and they said Saint Leo the Great. Um, about baptism by heretics, Saint Gregory the Dialogist, yeah, and Sa Isidore of Seville, yeah, Saint Cyprian of Carthage, Tertullian, John of Damascus, and Mark of Ephesus. So, this is uh, the the policy of uh, the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of the British Isles and Ireland on receiving the converts. Mm -hmm. So now. Um, um, we will uh, read yes. uh, our text on uh, on this because it's very important to to know exactly what is the truth yes. about uh, about this. So, right. Your Eminence, with reference to the recently published policy document of the Archdiocese the canonical resources and policies for the reception of the heterodox made public on the 9th of January 2024 and updated on, 11th, on 11th of January 2024, with pain of heart, my humbleness 
would like to bring to your attention to the very grave dogmatic errors in this policy document, which are contrary to the dogmas of the Church and has scandalized many of the Orthodox faithful. It contains contradictions, new definitions of well-established concepts, misinterpretations of the Holy Canons and of the teachings of the Holy Fathers, mistranslations and misuse of historical synods as arguments for the heretical theories of incomplete baptism and incomplete churches. His Eminent Damianos, Archbishop of the Autonomous Church of Sinai and Igumen of the Monastery of St. Catherine, states in the Confession of the Orthodox Faith against all heresies on the 26th of January 2018 that we show ecumenism as heresy and we publicly reject it and all its manifestations. The heresy according to which there would be saving grace outside the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church and that there would be valid baptism and working grace of the priesthood outside the Holy Church. The mere historical presence of a succession from the Apostles and the mere recital of the formula of the Holy Trinity does not validate the sacraments of heretics. The heresy which states that we cannot know where the boundaries of the Church are and that the, and then the entire mankind would be incorporated into an so-called unseen church. According to the Orthodox teaching, the church is historical, visible, with apostolic succession, which kept the right faith, which are the dogmas formulated at the ecumenical synods and the anathemas that delimit the dogmatic truth from the heretical lie. The right faith is carried on to the end of the ages only in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. The transformation of economy or economia into dogma or rule. According to the Orthodox teaching, economy is a temporary deviation from exactitude, acrivia, from the rule of faith due to human weakness in exceptional circumstances when, where its purpose is to bring people to Orthodoxy despite any obstacles. Economy is applied only in cases of force majeure, for a good purpose in unfavorable circumstances. However, when in the absence of exceptional circumstances, the application of economy continues, it disturbs and circumvents the canonical order. Then this adaptation is not a wise measure, but in defiance of the holy tradition, which leads to the disregard of orthodoxy. In this policy document, the terms economia and acrivia have been redefined contrary to their well-established meaning according to the teachings of the Holy Fathers and to the Holy Canons as follows. Two common misconceptions are to think that economia means a dispensation and that acrivia is the norm. In fact, economia means all the possible rules of the household, acrivia being the strictest of those. In fact, there is no misconception as according to St. Nicodemus the Hagiarite, the well-established definition for acrivia is exactitude, meaning the use of the formerly valid canons, and the definition for economia is tolerance regarding the temporary exceptional adaptation of the holy tradition for the spiritual benefit of persons who find themselves in exceptional situations. In other words, acrivia is in fact the rule, whereas economia is the exception. Then the term salvation is given a different definition as follows. Salvation in this context meant spiritual health. This approach mandated the exceptional remedy of baptism, not as some rigorous today suppose for all heretics or schismatics, but for some of them. This new interpretation definition is contrary to the actual meaning of salvation being united to Christ in his one and unique body. Also in the statement, there was no salvation outside the church, the past tense, was, past tense was used, which presents the teachings of St. Cyprian of Carthage as obsolete. According to the Holy Scriptures, our Saviour himself said that, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
Baptism is not a so-called exceptional remedy, but is the door, the only door of entry into the kingdom of God, which is the Orthodox Church. It is also contrary to Canon 1 of the Third Council of Carthage, held during the time of St. Cyprian himself in 200, uh, year 258, which states that we declare that no one can be baptized outside the Orthodox Church, there being but one baptism, and this being existent only in the Orthodox Church. Baptism is the dogma of the Church. One baptism in the Orthodox Church as we confess in the Creed. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic Church and I confess one baptism for the remission of sins. There is no dogma of the Orthodox Church that states that those who have a so-called Trinitarian faith are to be received by profession of faith and chrismation. It is forbidden to use canons of economia to make theology and dogmas from them, as evident in section G2 of the policy document. Nonetheless, pastorally, not dogmatically, this archdiocese does allow catechumens to choose an orthodox baptism instead of chrismation. The transformation of economia into dogma is actually the heretical theory taught by Metropolitan Ioannis Ziziolas. In the Confession of the Orthodox Faith of His Eminence Damianos, Archbishop of Sinai, His Eminence publicly rejects the transformation of economy into dogma or rule as one of the manifestations of the heresy of ecumenism. His Eminence has himself baptized many into the Orthodox Church who have been received by chrismation, which the policy document calls corrective baptism. It is a misnomer to call it corrective baptism. It is actually the one and unique baptism in the Orthodox Church. The apostolic canons have also not been mentioned in the list of holy canons pertaining to the reception of heretics in the policy document. The apostolic canons are established by Canon 2 of the 5th 6th Ecumenical Council and Canon 1 of the 7th Ecumenical Council as divinely inspired and of apostolic authority. The two apostolic canons on the reception of the heretics are as follows. Apostolic Canon 46 We ordain that a bishop or presbyter who has admitted the baptism or sacrifice of heretics be deposed. For what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had a believer with an unbeliever? Apostolic Canon 47 if a bishop or presbyter baptizes anew, one having had a baptism according to truth, or if not baptizing one polluted, so baptized, by the heretics, let him be deposed as mocking the cross and the Lord's death, and not discerning presbyters from pseudo-presbyters. The aforementioned policy document also introduced a new idea in the updated edition, version 1.1 of 9th of January 2024, that the reception of a convert by chrismation is not a recognition of the validity of non-Orthodox baptism. Instead, it is an act in which chrismation perfects whatever was lacking in their non-Orthodox baptism. This idea comes in contradiction to the statement in the encyclical of your eminence to the clergy of the Archdiocese on the 16th of December 2023 that it is forbidden to baptize twice, which declared that there is regeneration in baptism among the heretics and so there is the priesthood and the church among the heretics. The clause of non-recognition of non-Orthodox baptism is correct and to be appreciated but in this current statement, it is self-contradictory as well. The first clause rejects non-Orthodox baptism, but at the same time, the next clause accepts that non-Orthodox baptism would have something that needs to be perfected by chrismation, falling into the heretical theories of incomplete baptism and incomplete churches. <clears throat> in my discussion with Emeritus Professor Demetrios Selangidis of the University of Thessaloniki, on this specific quotation, he raised the blessed question, can a woman be partially pregnant or a little pregnant? Um, this leads to the, theo the logical conclusion that baptism can only be completely valid or completely invalid. 
These heretical theories of incomplete baptism and incomplete churches were in fact developed by Jesuit theologians Karl Rahner and Yves Congar, who were the instrumental theologians in the papist Second Vatican Council. In the Orthodox world, these heretic heretical theories were used by Father Georges Florovsky in the composition of the Toronto Statement of 1950 of the World Council of Churches, which was adopted by the Council of Crete in 2016 and by Metropolitan Ioannis Zizioulas. This new theo the theology defines a different ecclesiology which is contrary to Orthodox ecclesiology. His Eminence Damianos, Archbishop of Sinai, has also publicly rejected the heretical theories of incomplete baptism and incomplete churches as mentioned above. In order to support the heretical theory of incomplete baptism, references to the Holy Scriptures have also been completely omitted in the policy document. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself established the rule for the reception of all converts when he said to the holy apostles, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am always with you, even to the end of the age. It is the holy apostles and their successors who have been given the commandment by the Lord to baptize, to make disciples of all the nations, and to teach their disciples all things that I have commanded you. The heretics who are not successors of the apostles by the laying on of hands and by continuing in the apostolic faith, are not disciples of Christ nor members of his one and unique body. Heretics who are cut off from the Orthodox Church cannot unite their followers to the Orthodox Church. Therefore, there can only be one redeeming baptism, which is only in the Orthodox Church, the one and unique body of Christ, which has kept the apostolic faith as taught by the Holy Apostle Paul. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. When an Orthodox presbyter performs a baptism, he fully immerses the person three times in water, sanctified by the Holy Spirit in accordance with Apostolic Canon 50. The heterodox, who are outside the boundaries of the Orthodox Church, who are cut off from the Apostolic Succession and the Orthodox faith, cannot sanctify baptismal water as they are devoid of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, even if they are baptized in the name of a, of a Trinity, it is not the Holy Trinity as taught by the Holy Apostles, the Holy Fathers, and in the Ecumenical Councils, and it is not performed in sanctified water, and the person is not born again of water and the Holy Spirit. In the polity document, the Archdiocese has also promulgated a new canon of the Church without any synodal approval in section F, which states that any lay person who receives a so-called corrective baptism will be excommunicated and a clergyman will be deposed. This is a serious offence breaking the unity of the Church and as such it is dealt with in an uncompromising manner. Where so-called corrective baptism is when a person receives an orthodox baptism after be, being received by chrismation only. The justification for this new canon is that this prevents the breaking of the unity of the church, but the promulgation of a new canon, especially without synodal agreement, itself serves to cause divisions between the dioceses of the Church of Antioch. The accusation was also made against the laity and clergy, also in some monasteries including Mount Athos, and perhaps in some jurisdictions, who desire the orthodox baptism of all non-orthodox as a minority and often schismatic tendency in the orthodox church and extremists. A question that arises, is Elder Parthenios of St. Paul's Monastery on Mount Athos, who has performed hundreds of so-called corrective baptisms, and is the spiritual father of Patriarch John X of Antioch, an extremist and with schismatic tendencies? 
St. Paisius Velichkovsky describes the experience of the Yash Archdiocese during the 18th century when units from Trans Transylvania, who were initially received through chrismation, were baptized later by the Metropolitan of Yash on Holy Saturday. In his correspondence with Haramang Dorotheos Vulismas, the saint tells him to baptize without fear and without hesitation all those who receive by chrismation as if they were never chrismated, because this is in accordance to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who did not command his disciples to chrismate them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, but to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Neither did our Saviour say that whosoever believes and is chrismated will be saved, but whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Nor did he say, who is born of myrrh and the Holy Spirit, but except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The first necessary step for our salvation is baptism and no other sacrament. Clement of Alexandria, following the apostolic tradition regarding heretical baptism, shows that heretics being outside the church do not have the true baptism. Depart, do not stay in her place. It is equivocally called the gathering of heresy, a place. It did not call it the church. Then the scriptures continue, For so you will cross foreign water, considering heretical baptism is not from her own and clean water, and pass through a foreign water, that takes you along and drags you down into the sea, where the one who deviates from the safe path of the truth is cast away, being stolen again by the pagan waves. With reference to the decisions of four councils that were cited in section B of the policy document to support the recognition of, her of the, re the reception of heretics by chrismation, my humbleness would like to highlight that these council decisions have unfortunately been either misrepresent, misinterpreted or mistranslated. The 1484 Council of Constantinople was convened to officially declare the Council of Ferrara Florence of 1439 a false council and the Latins to be heretics and to call back to the Orthodox Church those former Orthodox who began to commemorate the Latin Pope of Rome following the false council. In the decrees of the council, the so-called Latins mentioned were primarily units who have submitted to the Pope of Rome after the false council, but have previously been baptized in the Orthodox Church. The synodal decree was done according to economy. For that specific time, due to the tyranny of the Latin states which controlled territories of the former Byzantine Empire, according to St. Nicodemus the Hagerite, and St. Athanasius Parios. St. Nicodemus continues to state that there is a time limit to economy and it is not perpetual and indefinite. The decision from the 1642 Council of Moldova as quoted in the policy document, this mystery of baptism once received is not again to be repeated provided the person who provided the baptism believed in an orthodox manner in three persons in one God, not, is not addressing the validity of baptism by heretics. Instead, it actually affirms that a true orthodox baptism into the orthodox church cannot be repeated in accordance with Apostolic Canon 47. Therefore, the decision of this council cannot be used to support the reception of heretics by chrismation. The 1666 and 1667 Council of Moscow was called by Tsar Alexei I of Russia and was attended by Patriarch Paisios of Alexandria, Patriarch Makarios III of Antioch, and bishops from Russia and other local churches. As cited in the policy document, it was upon the insistence of Patriarch Makarios III of Antioch which overturned the decision of the 1620 Council of Moscow that required the baptism of Latins and other heretics. In the record of this council's proceedings, 
were referring to earlier council statutes whereby it was forbidden to rebaptize even Arians and Macedonians in the event of their coming into orthodoxy. This is a misrepresentation of the canons of the ecumenical councils. Canon 7 of the Second Ecumenical Council and Canon 95 of the Fifth Sixth Ecumenical Council permitted by temporary economy for Arians and Macedonians to be received by chrismation, but the canons did not forbid reception by baptism. There are no canons of any ecumenical council which forbids the reception of heretics by baptism. The reference to St. Mark of Ephesus and the 1484 Council of Constantinople also has been misrepresented at the 1667 Council as not to rebaptize the Latins, but as mentioned above, the decree of the 1484 Council was done according to economy for the reception of former Orthodox who have submitted to the Pope of Rome. An important point to note also is that Patriarch Macarius III of Antioch, who has been very insistent and influential at the Council to stop the baptism of Latins coming into the Church, had secretly submitted allegiance to the Pope of Rome prior to his attendance at the 1667 Council of Moscow. Decree 15 of the 1672 Council of Jerusalem, as cited in the policy document, is based on a mistranslation which has led to the false conclusion that there is a so-called valid baptism among the heretics. According to Protopresbyter Theodore Zizis, Emeritus Professor of the University of Thessaloniki, and Father Seraphim Zizis, a more accurate translation from the Greek is, we also reject as something unclean and polluted the teaching that some imperfection of faith prevents the celebration of the sacrament. For heretics, whom the Church accepts after they renounce heresy and join the Catholic Orthodox Church, despite their imperfect faith, they receive perfect baptism, and therefore when they further acquire perfect faith, they are not rebaptized. Father Theodore and Father Seraphim point out that in Decree 15, Patriarch Dositheos is not addressing the validity of the baptism of those outside of the Orthodox Church, but is addressing the question of whether the operation of the Holy Spirit in holy baptism relies on a degree of faith of the person being baptized. In the policy document, the Synod of Constantinople of 1756 has been described in Section C as dissenting voices and that this synod has not stood the test of time because it overturned the consistent teaching and practice of the Church as received canonically from antiquity. This statement is in contradiction to the Synodal Decision number 8 issued by the Holy Synod of the Church of Antioch in 1933, that all heretics are to be baptized, which adopted the decree of the 1756 Synod. And this Synodal decision is the last official decision of the Church of Antioch on the reception of heretics. In the interpretation of Bishop Nicodem Milash, cited in the policy document which states that the decision is Contrary to the practice of the Eastern Church of all centuries and particularly to the practice of the Greek Church itself after the Great Schism, the bishop was unfortunately mistaken on the history of the Orthodox Church between 1054 and 1756. There has in fact been various sources during this period, including Latin and non-Orthodox sources, which testify that all heretics are received into the Orthodox Church by baptism in faithfulness to the Holy Gospel and the teachings of the Holy Fathers and the Holy Canons. Your Eminence, with prayer and love in Christ, we await the moment when Your Eminence will publicly and officially reject and anathematize the heresies that are the cause of our cessation of Your commemoration. These heresies are the heretical theories of incomplete baptism and incomplete churches, the pan-heresy of ecumenism, the participation in the World Council of Churches, 
the agreements with the anti-Chalcedonians, the so-called Chambesi agreements of 1989, 1990 and 1993, and the 1991 synodal statement of the Church of Antioch on the relations with the Syriac, so-called Syriac Orthodox Church that decided to allow intercommunion and concelebration with heretics that have been condemned by the 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th ecumenical councils. As the letter of your eminence of the 23rd of December 2023 has sealed the fact that you are preaching heresy in public with an uncanonical, null and void deposition, instead of trying to demonstrate that my, hum that my humbleness is in error and that you are not a heretic, we await the moment when your eminence will be led by your orthodox conscience to annul the aforementioned letter and by this proving your orthodoxy. All the actions mentioned above will then allow us to resume the commemoration of your name at all the holy services of the Church. Remaining faithful to the Orthodox Church of Antioch with all my love in Christ, Proto Presbyter Matthew Ion Valentin Vulcanescu of the parish of St. Edward the Martyr and St. Paraskevi of Rome the Ant in the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of the British Isles and Ireland. This letter has been co-signed by all the members of the parish. Thank you, thank you, with thank your, you very much, prayers, uh, Michael. Um, yes, we try to uh, to see exactly because the the salvation for us is the core, is the most important thing. Yes. So um, if we have a wrong dogma, we have no salvation. Um, the dogma of the church is not just um, a theory. Mm -hmm. It's um, um, the, the medicine for our salvation. So if we have a wrong dogma, yes. we are on the wrong path. Mm -hmm. So um, we are not old calendarists. We are not schismatics. We remain in the Orthodox Antiochian Church, yes. faithful to the Holy Fathers of the Holy Antiochian Church. Yes. We remain in the Archdiocese. We don't go anywhere. We have our bishop, is the Metropolitan Siluan Oner, yes. that we love him and we, we want him to be saved and we want him to open his eyes on these matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are glad and we hope and we in prayer we want him to restore the, his commemoration on all the holy services yes. in our tiny, tiny little uh, parish here in, uh, in Liverpool. So, um, um, because we take it very serious, the yes. problem of the salvation, it's something very, very serious. We, we are not uh, just um, looking for uh, some heresies yes. that are not exist or something we were. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it's um, it's uh, um, the statement or the statement of 91. It's against the fourth ecumenical council, mm -hmm. four, five, six, seven ecumenical councils. Yes, but as you uh, we've we've already shown to the we've already written to the bishop uh, multiple times on this issue that this is against the. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Like exactly. Councils, yeah. So it is a problem, and uh, and with the um, the idea that was uh, quoted that uh, uh, we don't baptize twice. Mm -hmm. So um, yes. we recognize the vapt the baptism or a form of baptism outside the church. Yes. How Mr. Tselengidi say that uh, um, you can't be half pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. You you recognize or you don't recognize. And about the canons, they receive some heretics mm -hmm. at that time. The, that heretics, they are not exist today. Yes. Yeah. Was um, those heretics were um, uh, into the apostolic succession? Was a gray zone at that time. Um, I remember I have uh, talked with uh, Father Georgios Metalinos. Yes on this subject and he told me that um, was a period of, of 100 years when uh, um, a group of heretics yes. become separated uh, totally from the church mm -hmm. they were so they um, they they uh, the, the church started to bring them into the church by holy baptism mm -hmm. yeah yes. it's 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 a big it's a huge difference and uh, it's, it's so misinterpretation of the what's mean uh, akrivia and, and the economia. economia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, it's what Christ said. It's uh, to be everybody to be baptized. Yeah, yes, 
That's the the as Christ says, we we follow. We exactly. are obedient to Christ. Exactly, it's it's, it's the gospel. So mm-hmm. the gospel say, uh, uh, go and uh, and baptize. No, yes. go and chrismate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, how uh, Saint Paisios, uh, the mm-hmm. great Velichikovsky says. Yes. Yeah, it's very important because he's an Isihast uh, father of the church. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know that in the church, um, those who have uh, catharsis clean their yeah, souls, purification, purification yes. enlightenment, yes. and de- de- theosis. Deification. De- deification. So those are who um, are uh, enlightened uh, to, to lead in the church. Yes. So we don't have, uh, like in the Roman Catholic if a bishop is a bishop, he uh, he he has no mistake. Mm-hmm. No, yes. <laughs> it's um, we don't have this kind of. This is the Roman Catholic attitude when the Pope is has no mistake. But um, we know that uh, a bishop or, or a priest can do mistakes. Mm-hmm. A synod can do yes. mistakes when they don't follow the Holy Father's teaching. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, we want just to be followed. The Holy Father teaching, and I, I, I know that uh, I was for 16 years in the Church of Greece, mm-hmm. um, and I look all the time uh, our conscience, Orthodox, to be to be very clear. Yeah, on uh, it's very important. Yes, that uh, as you mentioned before, that the is developing the, this Orthodox uh, from him on this mindset um, and, and understanding. Um, what the fathers are trying are saying through that orthodox mindset. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is very important for us to to be uh, in the mindset of the holy fathers and the, of the holy gospel of the church, yes. not to go uh, uh, away from the path of the holy fathers mm-hmm. and following uh, some ideas. Then they could uh, have the start in the church like the Augustinian teaching on um, on the form of the baptism mm-hmm. um, but we must not forget that the the augustine uh, theory of the proceeding of the holy spirit also from the son mm-hmm. uh, become an heresy in uh, later, later the, yeah, yeah. Church, so yes. uh, we must be careful even uh, if a father of the church uh, teach something that is different yes. from the other fathers of the church. Yes. So uh, when we talk about the, the Western idea uh, that uh, the baptism is holy in himself, mm-hmm. without um, thinking that uh, the baptism uh, himself, if, if the baptism is the door f- for the entrance into the kingdom of God. Yes. So if we... Uh, ignore this and uh, we say that everybody that perform a baptism in the name of the Holy Trinity is baptized and we receive him by chrismation or uh, we just um, feel that that is missing so Mm -hmm. so that means that he he have something so when you say that uh, you have something yeah you have something there that means what means that that means that you believe in in an existence of the Holy Grace Yes. That means if they have a little holy grace, maybe they have a uh, they have also Yerosini, mm-hmm. uh, that means priesthood. Yes. They have uh, mysteries, half of mystery, a little mystery, two yes. percent of mystery, five mm-hmm. percent of mystery. So this is not the way that the Holy Father uh, think mm-hmm. on this matter. We see the San Cyprian theology, and we yes. see the Holy Father's theology that was received by the Ecumenical Councils. That this is, was not. Uh, the way that the Holy Fathers uh, work in the church. No, um, I was thinking as well, Father, that uh, as you mentioned, the um, baptism being the door of entry into the church. Yes, exactly. Um, obviously, my from my engineering background, mm-hmm. um, for a door, is always going to be part of a building. Exactly. And the building is the church, so you can't have a door outside the church. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's yeah, a yeah. Floating door in the middle of <laughs> yeah. nowhere. <laughs> yeah, the door. You you go through the door. Uh, remembering, uh, remember that. Um, in the ancient church, we have the baptisterium, mm-hmm. yeah, yes. and the baptisterium was outside of the church, on the door, very yes. close to the door, and we mm-hmm. see that in the old monastery. Yes, um, we can see the place, the baptisterium, because the um, uh, the catechumens come to the baptisterium. They were baptized in the baptisterium, and after that, they enter in the church that uh, symbolized the kingdom of God. Yes. 
So this is very, very important. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you that you listened to us. And uh, God bless you all. Um, and enlighten you for uh, a, a right understanding of the Orthodox Church because the only salvation is in the Church of Christ, in the body of Christ. So uh, this is not something um, crazy yeah. or something... Um, um, abnormal, abnormal, or um, um, a schismatic ideas, or uh, extremist, uh, yes. or fundamentalist idea. This is what Christ said: go and baptize everybody. So, <laughs> where is uh, it's? It's simple. We we follow Christ. If if Christ is a fundamentalist, yeah. we are fundamentalists. <laughs> if Christ is crazy. We are crazy. <laughs> so, um, uh, we, we try to follow Christ. We are yes. not uh, Protestants. We don't, we don't try to shape Christ, to, of our, or to fit Christ in our mind, yes. but to fit ourselves in the mind of Christ. Isn't that what Christian means, to be little Christ? Exactly, exactly. So, uh, it's, uh, what happened today in the Protestant world, in the Anglican world and everywhere, it's that uh, they try to... To, to make Christ on their own image, mm -hmm. not to make um, ourselves in the image of Christ. Yes. Yeah, so because it's, it's easy to, to say Christ, uh, I, I, I understand Christ like this, and this is my Christ, and yes. I don't care what the church say. But um, because we don't want to be Protestant, we are Orthodox in the canonical Orthodox Church, yes. in the uh, Apostolic Succession, in the Church of Antioch, in the Patriarchate of Antioch, yes. we don't go anywhere. So this is another um, issue about um, the seizing of commemoration. So yes. the people, they don't understand. And they ask me, a lot of people, oh, what, you, where you will go? Uh, you will make your own uh, uh, church? What, no, 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 no. This is wrong. This is wrong. We remain in the body of Christ. We just fence ourselves yes. from the bishop that have a wrong understanding and the wrong teaching that was public, uh, publicly preached. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we fence ourselves from the, um, from the communion with the monophysites. Yes. So, and we remain in the church having communion with everybody else that think orthodox. Yes. This is the way that Amen. the Holy Fathers do us. Uh, Saint uh, Gregory Palama, when he was a Yeromank, yes. he do the same with uh, Patriarch Kaleka, yes. and all the other saints of the Church. Saint uh, Marco Evgenikos, yes. Eugenic, uh, um, he does the same. He didn't have uh, ecclesiastical communion with the other bishops. So uh, we can say, why you celebrate today, Saint Gregory Palama, yes. and Saint Mark de Evgenikos? Yes. Uh, if they were uh, if they were schismatics and uh, they were deprived by the holy grace because they were defrocked and uh, anathematized by the church or uh, this is this is not how the the church works unfortunately we are in um, um we 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 pay tribute to uh, the scholastic teaching or the roman catholic teaching on priesthood mm -hmm. and this is very very bad Mm -hmm. So, because we have a different understanding of the church, yes. the orthodox understanding, that is synodality, mm -hmm. that is following Christ and following the evangel, following the holy fathers mm -hmm. as a whole, yeah? Yes. We don't stick on one or two, or uh, we stick on all the fathers, and all of um, we, we know that we see now the, the church uh, doing the so-called corrective baptism, the fathers from Mount Athos, they baptized by triple immersion. The people, they were just chrismated mm -hmm. and they see the fruits. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. this is the, the fruits are of the Holy Spirit because they change. The changing was into the baptism, not into mm -hmm. just chrismation. Because the chrismation means the seal of the Holy Spirit. That means... They, they, they already received the Holy Spirit. Who gives them the Holy Spirit if they are heretics? Yeah. Because with the lying of the hands, we know in the first century of Christianity, mm -hmm. they put the hands on them yes. and they, they, they give them the Holy Spirit. Yes. And after that, after that, the forgiveness, the libelos, yes. and after that, the, uh, the, uh, the, seal. Made the seal of the yes. Holy Spirit, that they have already the Holy Spirit. We know also from the, from the Acts of the Apostles that sometimes the Holy Spirit comes 
Yes. To them, and after that they were baptized in the water yes. and spirit. Yes. Yeah. Like Cornelius. Yeah, like Cornelius. Yes. So uh, uh, we see that um, um, this has happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we know that this is the command of Christ, the commandment of Christ: go and baptize. So what Saint Paisio said uh, very is very very important because uh, he he was to deal with the Greek Catholics mm -hmm. and uh, they were they were receiving them the Orthodox receiving them by chrismation at that time and Saint Paisios that was um, an illuminated mind by the Holy Spirit say Christ said uh, what Christ said go and chrismate or go and baptized yes yeah so we can't change this. If we change this, we change the, um, the core of the church. Yes. And changing the core of the church, there is no salvation. So yes. it's, it's a big, big problem. Yeah. And this is based on Christ's understanding. Uh, if we are superficial and we want to change a religion because we like icons, yeah. we, uh, and we say that, uh, oh, I'm a Protestant, I'm an Orthodox, I'm a Roman Catholic, is the same, mm -hmm. is nothing changed. We must know that in the old books of the Molit Felnik, the old yeah, books, yeah. is wrote, when somebody is coming to the Orthodox Church, you must remember that you come from hell ah. in the kingdom of God. Very clear. It's very, very clear, clear, yeah. So, um, there is no Christianity outside the Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. And this is not uh, something fanatic or something crazy. To s it's Christ. His, Christ himself is the body of Christ. Christ didn't have many bodies. He has just one body. And in this body, he said how to come in. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's very, very simple. Yeah. yeah. This, this is uh, the, the, all the idea of the... Uh, so we continue our services. We don't commemorate any other bishop. Yes. No, we don't commemorate. Uh, we, we have our bishop, but we don't commemorate him. Uh, now, at this point, because yes. of the heresy, we fenced yes. ourselves mm -hmm. from the heresy. Nothing else. But we remain in the church. Remain faithful, the church of Antioch. Exactly, exactly. This, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank Goodbye you. to all. Good evening. Good evening.